All right, War Machines, welcome back. Um, I am uh, currently painting a canker worm here from the Crix faction. Um, I'm about halfway done with him. So what I'm doing, I guess, instead of showing you from beginning to end how to paint a model, because it's just so time consuming, especially the way I do it, um, what I think I, I can do is just show you, starting from about the halfway point, how it's going to end up looking and then uh, kind of continue on down so you can see how I've done this what I've done so far the colors I'm using are my my cheapo craft store colors we're using a uh, slate green which is what I use for all the Crick's armor um, we're using buttermilk we're using bronze, silver, and of course black goes with everything. He's already primed in black. Um, and uh, yeah, so, uh, oh, and I'm using just a, probably just a tiny smidge of flesh tone. Really, I just, I like to use this in like skulls, like bone color. I'll probably use it on his fangs, but just just about one molecule, and it would probably look fine without it. I just think it gives it a a better, like a dead, fleshy kind of look. But uh, all right, so you can see what I've already done is started painting his armor plating in that slate green, so he'll match the rest of my Crix faction. Like uh, the, the uh, Slayer Helljack here, it's pretty cool. I finished his base too. Pretty cool, right? Um, so what I'm doing and why I've done it, um, I started painting the plating because it's basically the lowest part of the model. If I happen to, when I'm painting down here, if I happen to smear it on the lip of the plating here, it doesn't matter because it's really easy to go back over it with black paint and just lightly touch the edges to uh, cover up the green. So it's always a good idea to start with the deepest, uh, the, the, the lowest part of the model. So I did the green several layers to give it a uh, like a fade out around the edges and then I went over this with the uh, bronze just treating it like a highlight um, the green here bronze and then that uh, buttermilk white and flesh color here and then uh, some of the mechanical stuff here you can kinda see it shiny there from the the silver color I used as well it's all uh, let's see I said it's already primed in black and um, yeah you can see here too I've also finished the uh, the rubble that he's perched on. So this cog I did with the, a layer of the bronze. I did a thinned out layer of bronze so it'd still be dark underneath from the primer. I did a regular layer of bronze to kind of highlight some of the parts and then I mixed in some silver and bronze to do a really light bronze and I actually went over that. You can see here where it's shiny on the edge to give it kind of a worn look and I just did a dry brush highlight there. Um, the rocks here, uh, mostly you're just seeing the black primer underneath but with this what I did was uh, I used a little bit of this gray, any gray would work to do the same effect. I used that gray and some black and I, I went over them pretty lightly so you could still see some of the primer underneath and in the cracks. After that dried, I mixed in a little bit of white, and uh, I went over it again, and then I went over it a third time with kind of a lot of white to just dry brush on some highlights there. So you can see that. The skull, I just went over it with the white, a mix of the white and the flesh color, and uh, just real lightly, and then I went over it again with this uh, the oil shade that I love to use just fills in the cracks, gives it that effect. Okay, so that's what we've done so far, and I'm just going to demonstrate 
techniques that I've been using to get it to look like this. I'm going to finish up the model, probably not on the video, just because it takes so long to, uh, to paint, because I'm very slow. So first, uh, to continue, I just squeezed out a little bit of the slate green onto my uh, little makeshift palette over here. And I'm going to add in a little bit of water, just a few drops, to thin out the paint. You don't want it really watery, but maybe not quite equal parts water and paint. A little bit more paint than water. But what's going to happen is when we go over these plates, we're going to see, because uh, as I've talked about before, acrylic paints are translucent. So when you go over it, if it's thin, especially, you're going to see that black primer underneath. And maybe I should have done the harder to see parts on my own so I could paint the easier to see parts for you. But and like I said before, if you get it on the lip of the armor there, it's not a big deal because we're going to go over it again with black. Okay, so that's one layer. And you can kind of see how the black primer is still visible underneath a bit. Let's get focused in a little here. Okay, okay. I'm going to do probably three layers like this. And each one is going to... Like this first one, we're going all the way to the edge of the plate. And you're going to use the uh, raised lip. Kind of stop the brush for you. Kind of use the, the uh, texture of the model to your advantage. kind of hard to see but there so we've got those two layers and you can see right here how that primer is visible underneath and that's definitely what we're going for because what we're going to do next is go over that again with a little bit thicker of paint just barely thicker we're going to go over that again but not quite go all the way to the edge. See that effect there? Do you see it? It's subtle, right? It's almost a subliminal difference, but you can see it. And you perceive it as a shadow. See that? So don't go all the way to the edge. On the second uh, second layer, how about that? And same up here. can see here. I'm going to do that just because I didn't get all the way to the edge the first time. You definitely don't want to leave any bald spots because that just looks weird. Okay. You see it? What kind of fade job we're doing? I know it's hard to see. One more layer would be on the most, the highest raised surface, or what the eye should perceive as the highest raised surface, where the most light would be reflected. I 
It's really hard to see. And I apologize, I should really be doing this when it's light outside because it's much easier to tell with natural lighting. Even with, like, I've got three lamps shining directly on this model and the overhead light, but it's still hard to make out details. All right, and I'm actually going to finish this. Alright, and what I'm going to do now, hear that, it's my new glass, I was using a Dixie cup before, I'm very pleased to have upgraded to a pickle jar. Uh, what I'm going to do now is get a little bit of just straight black paint on my palette here, just a like a molecule. I'm going to load the brush kind of uh, flat, you see that, just on one side, and what I'm going to do is just gently tap it on that lip. Just to fill in that. So it looks like we didn't paint all over that earlier. And people will think we're good at this. <laughs> Little do they know. The easier way to do this um, would be to uh, pay somebody to do it for you. But we don't do that, do we? We take pride in our work, even if we're not experts. Unless you are an expert, then you can still take pride in your work. Sometimes I'll use one finger to steady the brush, because I tend to shake a lot. I think it's from drinking like 20 cups of coffee a day. Alright, and this video is getting a little long, so now that you've seen this, I'm going to go ahead and first finish this one up, and then I'm going to put in the bronze, and then we're going to call it done. It'll be a much shorter video than the, uh, the one I did with that ghoul. It was like five parts. It was a long video, and not a very popular series. And I don't blame you. All right. So I'm going to use a little bit of that straight bronze color, just a smidge. I'm going to do basically exactly the same thing I did with the uh, the black part here on the lip. We're just going to go over it. Like that. For those of you that don't know, canker worm is a medium base model. It's a light war jack. I guess it's a bone jack in the Crick's lingo. And he's awesome, mostly because he's a big worm, but also because he has armor piercing. A lot of the Crick's uh, war jacks are they don't have much punch. They have a hard time with highly, heavily armored opponents, especially like Kador, Kador. Um, so yeah, I've chosen to add him in so that I can, uh, you know, occasionally win. Sounds fun, right? Alright. That would be my phone. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. See you next time.